Hello and welcome to the second part tutorial on the Asset Manager within Dungeon Fog. If you haven't watched the first tutorial on Asset Management, I suggest you watch that first before you continue watching this one. We're going to go back to the Asset Manager and once we have opened up that, I'm going to show you a technique whereby you can start to create your own props using the existing ones from Dungeon Fog and how powerful that is going to be for you. So I'm in the Dungeon Fog category, I'm in the Props folder just to make sure that I'm in the right space and I'm going to create a new collection. Now this collection I'm going to call Forest. And once I've created it, I'm then going to go through my various collections from Dungeon Fog and I'm going to add in a few trees, simply left clicking and dragging them into the box. Let's put in a tree stump, for example, and uh, let's add in just some more from a different collection. Let's go to the Greek folder. They've got some nice trees in there that are quite different from those ones. So we'll add in some Greek trees. And that'll give us a pretty good selection of what we are hoping to do. Let's put some foliage in as well. Now, what we then are going to do is we're going to start working with manipulating these props, making them work more for us than just a regular prop. To do so, I am going to firstly duplicate one of these props. So let's take the dark fir tree and I'm going to duplicate it by left clicking on the duplicate button. It's now created a duplicate. If I click on the name, I can now type in the name and I'm going to put in there, let's say blue. And you're going to see what I'm going to do now. Once I've done that, I press enter to lock that name in. And then I'm going to select the show details button. Now, what this does is this brings up an interface which you can only access in the asset manager. You can't access this in any other way through Dungeon Fog. What this allows us to do is it allows us to change the parameters of the prop itself. We could increase the prop's width, making it more oval. This will distort the prop, so bear this in mind when you are playing around with these values. Similarly, we could do the same for the height and compress it, or we could expand it depending on how we want to manipulate the prop. I'm going to leave those values as the same, however. What we can also do is then change whether it casts a shadow automatically, whether it is a light source, what kind of light it is emitting, the range that it's emitting. We can control all of our light values just as per normal. We can also change the rotation and the scaling. We can make this, let's say, for example, 90% in size. So it's automatically going to be a little bit smaller. We can mirror, we can make it above the walls, we can give it a drop shadow, whether it's concealed, needs a, a key, is it snapping to the grid? All of these options are available to us. And then most importantly of all is that we can change the color. So I'm going to make this tree a little bit bluer. I'm going to increase the saturation a little bit and I'm going to drop down that uh, value, the luminance value a little bit. I'm not going to change the opacity. I could also put in some tags. I could put in, say, blue, uh, fur, uh, tree. We can make all of those tags that we want to add in and those will be searchable using our search tool uh, anywhere within Dungeon Fog. And then I'm going to save. Now, what that's done is that has taken the original prop and it has simply altered it to being slightly darker green. I'm going to do the same thing now for the fir tree so you can see that process again. Once again, I'm going to duplicate it. Then I'm going to give it its own name and we're going to say fir tree and let's just say brown. Then I'm going to select the show details tab and I'm going to just make this tree a little bit duller, a little bit darker perhaps. Um, I could go with colorize, but I quite like that, that look. I'm going to change its rotation to 20 degrees and I'm going to change its scaling to 110. So it's slightly bigger. I'm then going to say save. Now, if you notice, let me do the grapevine. Let's duplicate the grapevine. Let's call this grapevine bigger grapevine, for example. Again, I'm going to come into my show details. I can then also copy these settings. So once I've made my adjustments and I'm only making small adjustments here, not dramatic, not massive, not massive adjustments because it's about subtlety. It's not about massive, massive differences. I can also then copy these settings and save. Now, if I go to the olive tree, I duplicate the olive tree. 
I select show details and I can paste the settings and it will paste these values. So this olive tree now has the same values as the previous plant that I was manipulating. So you see, we've got quite a lot of variation already starting to happen here. And the last one that we would need to change up is the pine tree. So I'm just going to change up the pine tree and I'm going to paste those settings again because it gave us quite a nice difference in color. And uh, I can see that it's changed its name as well. So let's just call this um, pine tree brown and this should be olive tree brown and what is the purpose of doing this well this is the purpose let me show you we now go back to our editor and we have our map here we're going to go to our props tab and it has defaulted to the dungeon fog props which is listed as per normal we're going to use the downward chevron left clicking to bring up my collections now here is the forest that we have already pre-made as a collection but notice there is this orange die a little dice that's sitting here and if i left click on that what Dungeon Fog is going to do is it's going to start cycling through all the props that is in that collection. So instantaneously, it's randomly cycling through props, allowing me to make a very quick forest with varying degrees of similarity, but also dissimilarity. It's a very powerful tool. When you then combine that with the standard tool of randomizing the rotation as well as the scale, suddenly we are no longer creating props that are identical in size, but now we're playing around with the different sizes and that starts to give us some real variation in terms of building up quite a dramatic forest in a very quick time with lots of different trees, lots of different sizes, lots of different colors as well. And I think that is a really, really strong feature that if you are like me and you're making lots of forests or you're making lots of areas that are going to have this kind of additional foliage requirement this is a very 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 versatile and easy way of populating a forest very very quickly without having to switch through all of the different props that you have available this collects them all under one roof and the benefit of course is that if you want to make more maps based within the same sort of territory you've already got all of the foliage loaded up ready to make that map and that is the advanced options of the Asset Manager.